Um, uh, it's still snowing, so everybody be careful. Uh, tomorrow it's going to be bad, and uh, it's not melting. It's not melting at all. Uh, so be careful getting out of here tonight and going home. Uh, one thing about it, it's dry and packed on the interstate, so there's a lot of cars out there, two-wheel drive cars, just front-wheel drive. Uh, so be careful. Be careful driving, and uh, don't take any chances getting hurt or anything like that. Um, we enjoyed the day. It's been a great day. I hate that a lot of y'all didn't get to come. Uh, we've had a good time of fellowship. Went and ate a big, greasy dinner at the Waffle House uh, with them, them, uh, them, uh, whatever them things was I had. Um, hash browns with hamburger meat sprinkled on top of it. It was good. Cheese. Um, very healthy and organic uh, dinner. And but we had an apple and an orange too, and we got up there and sweat, shoveling snow for a while. And the kids played, and now we're back here this evening. What a wonderful Sunday. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, take your Bible open to Psalm. Uh, we'll remember this one this Sunday for a while. So let's turn the Bible to the book of Psalms, three places, starting in 26, then going to 84, then going to 122. We're starting in 26, uh, then we're going to 84, then to 122. Ready? All three of these verses are about the same uh, subject tonight that I want to preach about. I want to preach about church this evening. Psalm 26, and look at verse number 8, Psalm 26, 8. Lord, David said, I have loved the habitation of thy house and the place where thine honor dwelleth. David didn't say, I loved uh, the movie theater. He said, I loved the place where your honor dwelt, the habitation of thy house. Now, over to Psalm 84. Psalm 84, and look at Psalm 84 and verse 10. Psalm 84 and verse 10. Look at this one, everybody. Get this one in your heart. David said this, For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than a dwell in the tents of wickedness. You know what that means? That means I'd rather open the door for people when they walk in and say good morning and give them a bulletin in the house of God, brother, than to be in Hollywood and star in a movie. That's what he said. That's what he said. And you, you, Oh, Brother Danny, no, I agree with that 1,000%. I'd rather stand back there and open the door for people and say good morning, come on in, uh, than I would be to own a million-dollar yacht in Florida and live on and have everything I want brought to. Really, you're happier that way. Now, one more, one more. Psalm 122, Psalm 122, and look at verse number 1. Uh, Psalm 122, 1. Uh, he said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Sound like David liked to go to church, don't it? Sound like David loved to go to church. And that's what I want to preach about this evening. Why I love church. I'm glad that I'm going to church. I don't go to church because I have to. I go to church because I want to. I don't go to church because I have to. I go to church because I need to. I don't go to church because somebody makes me. I go to church because I am afforded the privilege of going to church. I'm so thankful for going to church. My earliest memories of church were not, was not a whole lot. It didn't, I, I guess it had an impact on me. I don't, I don't know much for sure. My mom marched us up the hill at a little house in Clinchfield when I was had to be four, three, four, and five years old. I remember going, and we moved when I was five, so I turned six, so I, I had to be five years old. Don't ever think these little ones don't know when you're taking them to church. I remember it now to this day. I don't remember a whole lot about it. I remember she took me out one time and tore a limb off of a boxwood switch and wore me out uh, because I wouldn't behave. I remember that. 
That stuck with me, uh, but I don't remember a whole lot about anything that was said. I remember going in Sunday school class, Bible school, a few little things like that. Uh, I remember when I was growing up, my mom sang in a trio, her and her sisters, they called them sisters trio, her and her two sisters, and they went around singing in churches, and we'd go with them. And I remember the preacher get real red in the face and preach, and I'd lay in, you know, I'd lay in a pew and look up at the ceiling and stuff like that. But it's getting in me. It was getting in me, and I remember going to Nebo Baptist Church a couple of times before I got saved. It didn't have a whole lot of effect on me, and then I finally did get saved, and immediately when I got saved, I overnight, instantaneously, supernaturally, unbelievably, overnight, fell in love with going to church. I mean, in one hour, I started loving to go to church. I'm telling you, it made the difference. And so I'm going to tell you why I love church tonight. Number one, I love to go to church because I can hear the Word of God at church. I got a super interest in the Bible when I got saved. Uh, I remember I'd been saved just a few days, and I went over there to Roses in Marion, and I bought me a Bible. I'd never owned a Bible of my own, I don't think. I had one of them little Gideon Bibles, something they give us at church, I mean at school. And uh, I'd never owned my own Bible, but I went down to Roses in Marion when Roses on Main Street, walked back in there, and I found a little Bible. It was about the size of this psalmbook right here. A uh, little black Bible had a zipper around it like that. And when you open it, the pages were red around here. And I bought that Bible with my own money. I think that I paid three, five dollars for it, something like that. And I went out of there and I said, I got a Bible. I got me a Bible. This is my Bible. This one right here is mine, buddy. I opened it up, signed it to Brother Danny Castle from Brother Danny Castle. Uh, and put the date. I had one preacher sign my Bible, Brother Danny Castle. That was it. And boy, I tell you, I loved that Bible. And I carried that Bible and I began to get in it. They told me at church that the Bible was the Word of God. And I said, you mean God said this? And they said, yeah. And I don't, I don't understand how a, an educated person couldn't perk up when you hear that. Look, people, there's got to be a God. There's got to be a God. Only way this could be here, somebody had to make all this. And if God said something, I won't know what he said. If the creator of the universe wrote a book, get me that book. Right? If you're a smart person, you're going to say, you mean God Almighty wrote a book? If he wrote it, give me one. I'll pay whatever I got to pay for that book. If that's God's word, I want to know what it says. I cannot believe people. I can't understand people that just leave it laying and never pick it up and never read it. Even people claim to believe it. Uh, amen. Listen, brother. If that's God's book, tell me what it says. I want to know. And I went and I found out. I want to know what it says about life. I want to know what it says about creation. I want to know what it says about growing up. I want to know what it says about home, family, relationships, morals. I, it helps you think. Did you know what the Bible will do? Did you know the Bible will make you think straight? The Bible makes you think straight. If you're not careful, listen to me, all you people listen at home, that's why we stress coming to church. And, and, and every time you can possibly get you and your family in these doors, get in here. You know why? Because the longer you're out of church, the more you begin to think like the world thinks. The more you start thinking, don't, 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 don't try to say you don't. I will, you will, anybody will. The more you're out there in that world and the less you go to church, the first thing you know, you'll start thinking, well, that movie's not that really that bad and it's not that bad. And I know that music, I mean, I don't listen to that old satanic heart. I don't listen to that filthy rap. 
uh, cussing music. But, oh, my country music's not that bad. And all that. you start thinking little by little by little that the world's okay and that everything's all right. And, the first, and the, you know what you do? You come to church and somebody opens a Bible. Bam! Smacks you back in line. Love not the world, neither the things in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father not him. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. You see that right there? Slaps you back in line. Slaps you back in line. You'll get to thinking, well, my boss man's rich. It won't matter if I take a little stuff from work that I don't really earn. and Nobody will know the difference. And You'll start thinking that's all right. Then you come to church. Man gets something said thou shalt not steal thou shalt not steal slap you back in line uh, you'll get to thinking well I'm about tired of the old woman I'm gonna, she's 40 I'm going to swap her in for two twenties and you start thinking uh, like, uh, and, and, you, and, you, and you're ready to go out and live wild and get drunk and everything else and you'll come to church and the man of God will get up and say Marriage is honor and all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge, slap you back in line. You know, I love to go to church, keep me straight. I get to hear the word of God. You think biblically. All this stuff going on with the Wuhan flu, I mean, listen, people, uh, it's so obvious to us. Our, our, we can't understand why the world can't see it. You know, there's people out there tonight, if they come on CNN and said, put a Band-Aid around every finger before you go to work next week, they'd do it. Uh, they, uh, their, their, their God is, is the news media, and Dr. Fauci is, is their Savior. And they said they were people did not go to the revival last night because they thought it was going to snow. And all you have to do is look at your phone and say, we're going to start at 3 o'clock in the morning. And we had people take me and say, we can't go where it's going to start snowing. It's going to start snowing. I had people scared to death. And, and I, I listen to the weatherman once in a while, but the weatherman ain't God. And, and the, the preacher ain't God. And the doctor ain't God. And the politicians ain't God. This is what God said right here. I'm glad we can think biblically. When when the, the lockdowns hit our country and they were selectively enforced like big box companies could run but the little girl that run the salon down here had to close her shop. Every one of us said, that ain't right. That ain't right. But people that don't go to church just fall right in line with whatever the world says. Oh, yes, that's what we'll do. That's what we'll do. I remember going to Walmart, and I thought, what in the world? I, listen, there's people everywhere. I, I watched a little bit of basketball the other night, and we had everybody, the coach and the players, and everybody were sitting here with a mask on out there, and because we're, we're being good little boys. We're wearing our mask, and there was 10 old, nasty, sweaty men out there sweating all over each other in each other's face this close right here, falling down rubbing their face on each other's sweat and no mask. You say, well, they've been vaccinated. They have too. One sitting there. You see, if you, if you, if you listen to the Bible, you got a brain and you can think for yourself. I'm not against being safe. I'm not against being, wash your hands, being all that. But people, if you listen to the Bible, you know something's crooked as a blessed dog's hind leg over all this stuff like that right there. Say amen right there. That's right. This is for all you people at home and all God's people at home said. I couldn't hear y'all. I hope you said it. I hope you're not embarrassed. I can hear the word of God. I'll tell you why else I like to go to church. I like to go to church because I like to sing praise to the Lord. The Bible said in Ephesians 5, 19, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns, spiritual song, making melody in your heart to the Lord. You know why I like singing at church? Because we can get them kids up here and sing. And it's sweet. And it's a blessing. I like the group we had up here a while ago. I've always said... It, we don't have to have professional singers. 
I'm not against somebody being good and being able to carry a tune and can harmonize. I think that's so wonderful. But boy, you know what I like about going to church? You don't have to qualify to sing. You don't have to pass a singing test uh, to sing for God. All you got to, listen, if you want to sing in this church, you got you got, you got to be two things. And neither one of them's got nothing to do with music. You got to be saved and living right. You're saved and living right, you get at your, help yourself get up here and bell her out as loud as you want to in that choir. I'm telling you something, buddy. Listen, that's, that's music to God's ears. He said, let it make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Listen, I like to hear people that can sing well. Woo, glory to God. I love this. Kyla Rowland, all them songs she wrote and all them. I love it. I love it. I love it. But I tell you what, brother, I've seen people stand up and just sing and raise their hand. It, their voice was scratchy. They was off tune just a little bit. But I believe the Lord is up there saying, Amen! Up there to it. I'm glad I go to church. I like church because it puts us all on level ground on our singing. There ain't no big shots and little shots. Brother Dylan, that talent, he's got, he's definitely got some talent. Beautiful voice, singing like that. But, but I'm telling you, listen, Frankie's got one too, amen. Marty's got one too, amen. Uh, Jaws has got one too, amen. Uh, listen, brother, that's why I love to go to church. We can all sing and enjoy the Lord. I'll tell you something else. Number three, I love to go to church because I get to fellowship with God's people. I, I loved to go to church when I first got saved because I loved my pastor. And he probably, oh my goodness, back then he was probably about, he wasn't about 50, but I thought he was 110. I get, that's the way the kids look at me now, I reckon. Uh, but uh, I thought he was 100. And uh, I, I loved to be around Preacher Hollifield. And I loved to be around Miss Holland, that old lady, 90 something years old. That prayed for, and I love to be around uh, uh, Miss Edwards, who prayed that I told you about this morning. There was something different about I I I seen people in our own church right here. Maybe I had to be out for a while and was sick, and when they come in. They smile. They just light up. It is so good to see you. It is so good to see you. Iron sharpeneth iron. So a man's countenance of of his friend. And buddy, there's just something about, there's something about going to church. I don't know what it's like to be out of church. I've never missed church. I've never, God's been good to me. I've never had to miss a, a, a service uh, unless it was something emergency or something come up or a plane didn't, uh, something like that. But I, I, I sometimes go from Sunday night to Wednesday night, and it's just so good to see everybody. Going down yonder at Brother Chris's this week, I walked in there Friday night. Some of them people I hadn't seen since 2019. We had a revival 17 years in a row, and we didn't have it in 2020 and we didn't have it in 2021. And I walked in there Friday night, and they said, good to see you, Brother Danny. And I said, good to see you. It helped me. It helped me. Uh, listen, get your kids. Get your kids in church. Get your family in church. Uh, get the hymn books open. Sing the song. I love church because we get to see each other. Number four, I love church because I get to worship in spirit and in truth. Bible said God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I like to see people standing in the choir like this right here and saying, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. And all of a sudden, just forget there's anybody else here. And because of Calvary, it does me good to see other people worship. Sometimes I just forget about, forget about your brother, forget about your sister, forget about who's here, and just throw your hands up and close your eyes and worship, brother. I'm, I love church. I love church because I get to worship God. It's worship words. I'm going to learn worship words like hallelujah, glory, praise God. I remember them old preachers when I first got saved and it said, it's in, in here, brother, and you need to come, uh, brother. And, you, and I said, well, why are they calling everybody brother? And then I, fa- I figured it out. We was all family and I started saying brother and it felt good to be a part of the family. And then I started saying amen. And then I started saying, Woo, 
glory. And then I started saying, Jesus saves, are you saved? And then I started saying, heaven or hell? I adopted a Bible language. I'm glad to go to church because I can worship God, buddy. You can worship God. Now listen. I'm glad I can go to church, number five, because I can be drawn closer to the Lord. James chapter four and verse eight. Drawn out of God, he'll draw out of you. That's right. It helps me. It helps me. Just getting to see people. I miss our bus kids. I miss everybody. It helps me draw nigh to God. When, uh, when uh, uh, the teardrop trio, I hope all three of them are listening right now, when they're up here singing, I get a blessing. When, when Cassandra's boys are up here, down there last night, I, when I went in, they're up there singing, I'm going to stand by me. It blessed my soul, brother. It thrilled my heart to hear them boys sing. And then Kerrigan and Trickle and all of you, I hope you're all watching, and, Car- and all the choir, and, and Miss Tara and Diane and, and, and everybody who sings specials up here anytime at all. It does me good to hear y'all sing. It's a blessing. Brother, I love to hear. So you can't, if everybody stayed home, can't do that. That's why we need to come to church. It's because we can draw closer to God. Listen, I love the bus kids. I didn't forget uh, uh, when Yaya, when Yaya first started coming to church. Many of you at home missed Yaya this morning. She's here tonight, actually. Uh, I heard that. I heard that Jeremy was bringing her. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, when she was when she first when she first started coming to church, uh, I. I went, I've been to her house actually, and bless her heart, I come in the nursery one, her, that's her favorite room in the old church, that nursery back there. And I walked in there one Sunday morning, and she walked up to me, and she said, are you God? <laughs> I said, no, I am not God. And she just fell backwards like that. She is slain in the spirit. Right there in the nursery, hallelujah. I got the biggest kick out of that. She heard, she'd seen me stand up here and holler and scream and everything. And she thought, no, I am love you, honey. Honey, you are going to be so disappointed if you think that. I, I'm, I'm glad. Look, you know how I'm going to church? I'm, when we go to church, we know the preacher ain't God. The deacons ain't God. The Sunday school teachers ain't God. The politicians ain't God. Dr. Fossey ain't God. We come to worship the real God. And I can be drawn closer to him. Amen. Number six, and I'm through. I love to go to church because I can see lost people come to the Lord. The best thing in the world besides getting saved yourself is somebody else getting saved. My heart yearns to see people walk these aisles and get saved. We see some now and then. We're not setting the woods on fire. We're trying I thank God we can see people saved. The greatest miracle a person can ever experience is the new birth. Amen. His future is secured. His reservations are made. You don't get that anymore. We went to the Waffle House today, and I had that whatever it was I got. I don't even know what it caught. We called it. It was hash browns and cheese, then hamburger meat scattered on top of that. All you boys, they all got breakfast. I probably wish I'd probably got that. They had bacon and pancakes and eggs. And uh, man, that was good. We had a great time there. But you know what? As we were in there with all of these typical looking Waffle House customers, <laughs> we, uh, 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 truck drivers and some pretty rough people sitting in there. Looked like they'd had a rough night last night. As we were in there and we finished our food, nobody stood up and said, if anybody in here needs to get saved, I'll, I'll, yeah, now's the time to do it and start playing just as I am over the intercom. Didn't happen. Nobody mentioned getting saved. We tried to witness, but nobody mentioned getting saved in that place. The music was horrible. 
I don't know what it was. Half rock, half country, something or another. It was nauseating uh, to, to your spirit. And, and nobody said anything about you. Saying, Look, I went to the hospital the other day and visited um, Willow's dad. And I went the other day to see somebody else. And nobody said, as you walk in here, uh, you can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, and you can get saved. Hey, if you go to a public school, you never walk in there one time. And the teacher get up and say, would anybody in the class like to be saved this morning? No, it won't happen. That's why I like to go to church. I like to go to church because we offer people the opportunity of being saved, and people do get saved. The vast majority, you wait next Sunday morning, I can have people raise their hand. 90% of the people in here saved got saved in church. That's why I love church. Ain't going to do it in the movie house. Ain't going to do it in the courtroom. The judge don't get all them people in there and say, now if anybody in here is not saved, uh, raise your hand. I'm gonna, huh? You only get that at church. I love to go to church. Let's don't let our church dry up. Let's get in here in 2022 and have a, have a, uh, Dylan, Dylan, I want you to get that music ready. I want us to stand with our heads bowed, play it real soft. And let's have an invitation tonight. And on all you folks at home to bow your head. I want you to bow your head and close your eyes. I wonder how many of us just get in here in this altar, crowd around the altar here this evening. It's not too late. It's 2022. It's not too late to start reading your Bible. Get on. Come on. Come on. Let's pray. Amen. Amen. Let's get in the altar and say, Lord, here in 2022. I'm going to live for you. I'm going to appreciate church. I'm going to appreciate my church family. I know it's unusual when we preach this because the big, big majority of our folks could not come, could not get out, snowed in. My heart goes out to you. I know there's people out there that said, Lord, give anything to be there, Brother Danny, but we cannot. I understand that. But maybe this has helped you to be able to get back in next Sunday and appreciate church. Father, I thank you this evening that we're not going to hell. I thank you for the church, the pillar and ground of the truth. Lord, and we know the church ain't these walls and this this carpet and this pulpit, but it's these people. I thank you for shining light Baptist Church. I pray that you bless us in these days ahead as we go into 2022. Help us, Lord, to live for you and serve you. Bless all of our bus kids. Let them all be back in here next Sunday. Bless all of our adults, people that have been sick with any kind of flu or cold or virus or anything like that. Heal them, Lord, that they might be able to get back in here next week. God, don't let our church get backslid and cold and spiritually indifferent. Lord Jesus, I pray that you'd bless Shining Light Baptist Church. Give us a good week. Lord, bless everybody. Lord, I pray that you'd reach out there and touch that one at home tonight that seemed like they're just barely hanging on. That teenage girl that sinned, maybe messed up, backslid. Help her right now to get her heart right. That teenage boy that's been fooling around looking at stuff he shouldn't look at, help to get right right now. That man and wife, help to get right with each other and you right now, I pray. Oh, God, do something this week. Get us ready for Wednesday night service, Saturday morning visitation, Sunday morning church, Sunday night church, youth rally, youth camp, camp meeting, everything coming up this year. We'll thank you for it. Go with us now. Let everybody have a safe trip home. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Let it play for a minute. You're dismissed. Everybody fellowship. Good evening. Don't forget.